what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Rail, back with another review, man. Yo, salute to all my people out there, man. I hope y'all had a safe, a uh, well-fed Thanksgiving, if that's what you celebrate. I hope you got drunk with your family or your loved ones. And for those of us that are unfortunate to have lost family members or don't have family for Thanksgiving, that could be a rough day for y'all, you know what I'm saying? So my heart goes out to y'all. And, you know, just... Get happiness where you can. You know what I'm saying? It, it don't matter how. As long, as long as it don't come at the expense of others. You feel me? But you good. And Rail's here with you. All right. So now we're here for Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 10, The Finale. The Finale. I got to say, Game of Thrones knows how to fucking end a season. They, they don't be bullshitting. They leave, you with, they leave us with perfect cliffhangers. They give us all this action. It's terrific. It's terrific. It's not yet that that whole the episode before the last one is the great one. This is two seasons in a row. Finale ended how it's supposed to. Like, oh, shit, I can't wait for another year. Game of Thrones did it beautifully with this season. However, this episode, I'm going to nitpick. Because I don't get, the Game of Thrones is so great, I don't get opportunities to fucking kill certain things. Like, certain shit just, I can't let it go. And this is one of those rare moments where I've got to shit pun <laughs> Game of Thrones in this episode. And we're going to go to Karth for this. Now, we know Khaleesi went to go get her dragons, right? She didn't seduce Jorah to come with her. And let her know that this this had to happen. So she went to the House of the Undying. She got transported up there. And now she's checking out this creepy place. She ends up on her dragons and uh, Skeletor, right? Skeletor the wizard. Now, what I didn't like was the cop-out of that scene. Because she is magically in chains, which is fine. He is. He tells her, like, I plan on keeping you next to your babies, keeping y'all alive forever, because with your birth of the dragons, it, it brought magic. My magic is stronger than it's ever been. When your dragons came to life, I'm fucking David Blaine out here. I'm Chris Angel, bitch. Like, it's, it, it's, I've reached full update on my magic. But as his magic went up, it seemed like his fucking common sense diminished significantly. As she's standing there and it looks like she's on the down and it's all over for her, she just says, Dracarys. And this, the cute little dragon had a puff of smoke. You know, and what I didn't understand is how Skeletor is looking like, hmm? Like, wait, is this dragon trying to... Oh, she's trying to set me on fire. Poof! Right? Sets his sleeve on fire. Now he's trying to bat it. Right? And then she really lights him up. All three dragons at once. Like a fucking orchestra of fire. They they slow roast, quick roast his ass. Right? Now, I, it, I understand the scene is supposed to be like, ooh, Danny, she's the real magic. Her and her dragons, you ain't competing. I get what they're trying to say. Because people question her. She did step into the fire, right, unscathed, and came out with dragons. She was dipping herself in fucking boiling hot water and had no issues. Like Danny's magical. We get it. We get it. But I've seen Skeletor turn into 8 million Skeletors. I've seen Jorah shove a fucking spear through him. And he pops out on the other side like, yes, come to the house of the undying uh, mother of dragons. You can't kill me. We're everywhere. So I'm just going to poof and be gone. So we know the abilities of Buddy. You mean to tell me that a flame on his sleeve sent him in such a, a panic that he didn't warp into another person, that he didn't use ice magic to like, oh, poof, what the fuck? What the, whoa, get that out of here. I mean, he could have detached his arm like a fucking uh, lizard does his tail when it's in danger or something. Like, he's magical. I've seen him. I've seen eight million of him slice throats 
at the at fucking at the same time. It's hard for me to digest that one little dragon set his arm on, on fire and he's fucking panicking and then he's allows himself to be there to be engulfed in flames. It just felt so anticlimactic. You know what I mean? Like that was such a cop out. What I would have liked to see, I don't know, maybe a uh, fire versus magic battle. Like maybe the dragons fucking are flying around and they're attacking the different ones and and Danny is like she's reaching next level shit with her magic, making a flame, maybe engulf the room. So anywhere he tried to transport, he'd be on fire. Anytime he tried to make duplicates of himself, like that would have been doper than just sitting this dude on fire. So I was very disappointed in that. And then her chains were melted down. So I get dragon fire is fucking hot. I copy that. And it might even be, might even have some type of magical essence to it. it you know, you probably just couldn't put it out with your average fire extinguisher. But I, eh, a man that can make himself into multiple people and get out the jam, it just, ugh, it didn't sit well. And then, I love how Daddy walks in the room with Zora Zafafakhanov. He in there with uh, betting. His uh, uh, Danny was her right hand chick, right? The one that showed show her, gave her the strokes. He got up out that bed like he got caught. <laughs> like his girl walked in the room and shit, like, oh shit. Wait, she made it? Like, oh no. And then she's like, oh God. Oh God, Khaleesi. It was, he told me you'd be dead. Like, he said, I had to do this. Please, please. She started copping, please, immediately. She knew what fucking time it was. And they just sitting there smirking. And he's like, but I'm the king of cards. I could give you fucking 10,000 ships to do. Then they crack the vault open and see there's nothing in there. And she's like, got it. This was a lesson I needed in life. And then they proceeded to lock my man in his empty uh, little little vault. Took the only key that could open it. So that's, the, that's it. Suffocated, buried alive. That was a cruel death. I don't know, honestly, I get it. I get that she had to retaliate. She couldn't just let it go, you know, like that. But I felt like Zara was the king of Karth. Am I crazy? He was actually the king of Karth. And there's still wealthy people. It's it's a beautiful place. He had the ability. I would have just used him. Like, okay. Like, on some, like if the, I, I was thinking about, like, what would Tywin Lannister do? Would he, res, would he in, in, in act revenge just because he got away? He thwarted Zara's plans. Would he then in turn kill him? Would Tywin do that? Would Jon Snow do that? Would Tyrion do that? I think the leaders that we see may have not done that. He, they would see him as being, oh, now you're an asset. Now you work for me. Oh, we're still going to rob your jewels and shit. It's just the Darth Racky way. We're leaving with your gold cutlery. We're leaving with your gems and shit. But like, I don't know. I felt like she jumped the gun on killing Zara. He could have been very useful. You could. She could have started off. There are soldiers in Karth. And we didn't need to buy ships. If, you, if she was to leave Zara alive, she would have had the ability to take his ships some army, she would have came with it, right? She would have she would have been being able to replace. I would have just bent him over the fire and took what I could from him and let him know I'm on his ass. And now he knows not to fuck with me. I think that would have been a more bossly move. But, you know, I guess. I guess it worked out. Uh Jon Snow. Uh no, we're not gonna go there. We're gonna we're gonna end there. Let's go to Tyrion. My boy took a buck fifty across the face, right? I love the scene when he wakes up and he sees the Grand Meister there. And he's like, wait, what the fuck? Like where I was like, oh, you took a and then grandma's like, oh, you got injured in battle. And and he just start he before he could even gather his faculties, he's like, Holy shit. Hey, come in here. Tell hey, tell Bron. 
I'm alive. And the Grand Maestro is in here. Tell somebody else. Let these motherfuckers know I am very much alive. So if this nigga try to pull something, come get his ass. I was like, hilarious. Tyrion is not for the fuck shit. You're not gonna get Tyrion. I mean, have, have, have any of y'all just woken up? And like, you know how, like, let's say you're trying to get, like, you got your alarm clock for work. And it, it, it did go off and you didn't hear it. And now you wake up in a frantic, like, oh, what the fuck? And then your brain is still foggy because you're waking up and then you're trying to get dressed because you're like, holy shit, I'm about to be late. And you falling all over the room and shit, trying to put pants on and shit. You, you can't even gather yourself. That's where Tyrion beats all of us. He woke up in that fucking fog and immediately recognized my life could be in danger. And I thought that was fucking hilarious. And the Grand Meister informed him, you are no longer Hand of the King. This is, these are your new quarters. Okay, up in here, enjoy this. And he just kind of flexed on him a little bit. Like, ah, little hoe-ass dwarf, look at you now. You got no power, I'm the man. And here, here, takes this coin. You know what I'm saying? So Grand Meister got the last laugh, I guess. For now. He definitely got him on that one. But uh, we see Varys come in and share some words with him and let him know. Which was... That was a real conversation. I enjoy it. Them two together are like the dynamic duo. I really enjoy. There's a, there's two relationships I really like. I love the Tyrion and Varys. I love the Bronn and Tyrion. I love their relationship. But there's also, shit. I like Jamie and um Brienne. I come to love their relationship, too. I mean, we don't see I'm jumping the gun, but but Varys and Tyrion, you know, it's so many elements to that. Because Varys has his own goals. Nobody really knows what they are uh, except Ned. He took that to the grave. Varys was the only part that Varys shared his true aspirations to Ned Stark. Let him know, like, look, I want what's best for King's Landing, for the Seven Kingdoms. Like, that's what I want. I want a proper leader. I don't want no psychopaths, no masochists. I don't want no fucking sadists. This fucking Joffrey is bad for business. The Mad King was bad for business. You know, I just want a legit ruler that looks out for everybody. Not trying to call shit and protect us. And I'm like, cool. And allows me to still be me. And, and and let me get my shit off. You really feel with Varys, there's no ill intent in anything he does. He's just looking for the right person for the gig. Right? Tyrion doesn't know that's his, his motive. But, you know, when Tyrion gets there, there's they're, they're playing the game. We're going to share some truths with each other. I'm going to omit some shit. You know, I'm trying to find out what I can on you. What can I use against you? And then out of that grows a respect for each other. Like, yeah, I know how you give it up. I respect it. You got me on this. So, okay, we got our our things are aligned. But in this aspect, in this room, Varys is, is constantly reaching out to be genuine. Like, he was genuine with Ned and he's genuine with Tyrion at a time when Tyrion needed it the most. You know, and I just thought that was dope. He came in and said, look... <clears throat> Uh, we know you saved the city. If it wasn't for you, we'd all be fucked. So there are people here, even though you're not hand of the king no more. There's people here. Your name, hey, you love them no truth. Your name ain't gonna be remembered for doing this. It's not gonna be in no record books. You're not gonna be in the song, you know. But there are people who know what you did, and we fuck with you hard body for it. And that was just, you know, and those was something that Tyrion needed because right now he's a half man. With a buck fifty across his shit. Now he wasn't the most handsome, but he felt like he was. So now you know our man's is down in the dumps. So and and Varys knew just what he needed. Brought Shay in for him, <clears throat> and then they share a special moment. I thought it was beautiful. You know Tyrion. This, we don't see Tyrion vulnerable a lot. This is his probably second time <clears> that <throat> we've seen him actually vulnerable. The first time was with Bronn and Shay when he explained the story of uh, the whore he married and, you know, all that evil shit. 
that tie his father did to him behind that. And we see it now where he just is open and honest, like, man, I don't want to leave. I love playing this game. I love outthinking these people. This is what I was here for. I was made to play this game. Like, I don't have many skills. This is what this is what I have. And you just did like, damn. Cause he's so cocky. And we just like, you know, he's such a boss, but it's like, check on your strong friend. And now Tyrion feels like he's ugly along with being half a person. And Shay is like, I'm yours, yours, mine. I'm not going nowhere. Like, I'm in it. Not for the money. Fuck this. I'm with you. And he just breaks down in tears and he just goes, there's real love here. There's real love. I love it. And then uh, we see my boy Tywin back. Savior of the city. His, his horse had to take a shit before coming in. I thought that was nice. I was like, yes. Tywin has some skill. He knew. It. I don't know how he knew his horse had to take a shit, but he was like, yeah, go ahead. Do it right here. That's That's control. Take your shit here. We're about to walk into the uh, throne room. Takes his little uh, hand of the kingpin and walks out. That's kind of, that's gangster. I've never seen nobody walk in on a horse. Tywin rolled in, took his pen, dipped, said thank you. Little Finger got hair and haul, all type of shit. So he leveled up. And in that, Joffrey gained a, a, a wife. Fine, fine ass Marjorie. Who knew just what she was talking spicy in it too? I said, God damn, Marjorie. And I've grown to love you from afar. And I felt it deep within me. And he's like, Jarvis, oh shit. I don't know if I'm ready for her. And if you peep, Cersei don't say nothing, but he she was listening. She's like, ooh, this bitch is good. I'm like, oh, okay. And then she was she was intrigued, but she don't know what she started. So they, 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 she said, Hey, you want to do me a favor? Marry my sister, Marjorie. And he's like, man, but a king, I, I said my oath to Sansa, a king don't break his oath. And then here come the grand master. Like, well, technically because the Starks have been fucking shit up, you don't really owe them nothing. So you're free to do what you want. And he's like, say less. So now he's now betrothed to Marjorie. I love how Sansa walked off with that smile. And it was immediately accosted by. Littlefinger with the truth. Littlefinger's a snake motherfucker. We always know he's got an agenda. But one thing he will tell you is the truth. Now, it's up to you whether you're going to heed it or listen. He tried to help Ned. Oh, yeah, he did. I will not forget. He tried to give Ned the play. He tried to come to him first. Ned was on some noble shit and got fucked over. So now, here he is reaching out to Sansa, letting her know, like, you think you got away? You think Joffrey's just going to be like, oh, yeah, I got me a new wife, finally. Let Sansa go? No, now you're a prisoner, and you're not even, you know, betrothed to him no more, so you're even more in danger, okay? You're of age. He could take it from you anytime. He could beat you anytime you want. Now you're a plaything. Anytime Rob is out there fucking up the troops, he could just come in and fuck you up off of GP, right? And he let her know, like, shorty, of saying how King's Landing is your home. You're a terrible liar. Everybody in here is better than you. At it. So please just listen and allow me to help you. So Sansa fucked herself. She should have went off with the hound. Everything that's coming to her, it, it just fucking is what it is. So while she don't have to marry Joffrey, she's in even a more dangerous position than she's ever been. So it's looking nasty for her. Um, Rob's dumbass goes and be dumb. These Starks, man, I don't know. These Starks, I, I it's very few of them I fuck with. Very few. <laughs> so, Rob comes back like a child. Rob is such a giant child. He comes to his mother's uh, holding cell, right, where he put her, and talks to her about wanting to marry this chick. And his mother is letting him know, like, you do not fuck over a man like Walter Gray. It just doesn't happen. What, you don't want to because she's not cute enough? You're not having secret romances in the, in the forest? Like, I understand. But I didn't love your father. He didn't love me in the beginning. But the love we got after over time meant something. Not some fling in the forest. I know old girl foreign and she fine and she's doing all this shit. Wonderful. But you don't fuck over a Walter Frey. Like, I'm just letting you know. 
And he was coming to her. Even like if you were wondering, like, why would he even come to her? And what what was his purpose? I'll tell you. Rob's purpose to coming to his mom and explaining his love or what he wants to do. It wasn't to get her counsel. He wanted to hear his mom give her give him the okay. Like he needed baby. He was coming in hoping to say, hey, mom, I know we did this, but I really love her and I know you like her. Can I just marry her? What else can we work out? You think it'd be that wrong? He was hoping to be coddled and say, you know what, babe, follow your heart. You know, if you love this woman, you fight for that love. He was looking for that type of support. Instead, he got hard truths. And he tried to spin it on her like, well, fuck you anyway. Like, who are you to tell the one my father's dead, so I don't give a shit what he would say. Okay, he's not even here. And the one parent I got left can't tell me about being reckless. So now he's just having a, a bitch fit. Like, he's just, that's what he's doing. Like, and then he goes off and gets married in the woods. I was like, yeah, that's it for that. That's it for that. I don't know no other warning. His mother could have told him she tried to break it down to him and he's using any little excuse. Now, nothing like, so you mean to tell me you came to your mother for advice and then when she gives it to you, you immediately throw it in her face that she let Jamie go. So now her word is not incredible for nothing. So why the fuck are you here, Rob? Like, this is what I'm talking about. Now is the destruction of Rob, this secret marriage. And it's just fucked. He's so fucking stupid. I don't understand it. And somebody equally as fucking stupid is his homie, Theon. Now the horns are blaring. It's a siege. Now he's sitting there like, did my dad say anything? But he's like, look, you killed all the crows. You killed the ravens. You did everything. You're fucked. You just got this little crew here. I'm going to kill the horn, man. And he's just sitting there like, damn, I made a bad decision. I fucked up. (laughs) I did. And he was like, okay, well, fuck it. But Theon is equally as dumb. He knew that this was an option. His sister told him, don't die here. He knew this was very viable. But yet and still, he was trying to prove a point to I don't fucking know who. And then he shares with the Grand Master, like, do you know what it's like to be a slave here? Take from your father to your father's judging you and do it. So you got daddy issues. And you thought, I don't know, crashing out was the way to go? You thought taking and 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 threatening people that actually raised you and gave a semblance of a shit to you? And, it, it, and you're trying to prove yourself to a father who willingly gave your ass over? Like, make it make sense. Now you're fucked. Then he comes outside like, fuck it. Gives a great speech of, Let's go out there and die like men, and whoever kills the horn man, like, we're good. Like, let's go do this. And probably so they knocked his ass out and said, yeah, fuck, buddy. Like, no. But it was a good speech. I just wanted them to finish. Because that's the iron way. They... Those people are not the ones to die um, with valor in battle. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's not their M.O. Their M.O. is go in, okay? Siege, rape, rob, dip. If we can fuck these people up, let's fuck them up. If we can't, let's fucking run away with the shit we got, and then we'll plot again. They are just a town of thieves. That's it. There's no honor amongst them. That it's they talk about how stealing is their code. Taking from others is the code of the the, the Iron Islands. Like that's what they do. So you think that it was nobility there? Like, he's giving a speech to the wrong set of motherfuckers who is about to, yes, turn him in. They're like, fuck this. No, we got our shit. Let's go. Burn this bitch down. Hand over Theon. And we're fucking out of here. And that was it. He's gone. They took him. And, you know, I think they took him with. They didn't show what happened to him. But I know the offer was, we'll let everybody live if you hand over Theon. So right now, there's a chance that uh, they're doing just that because that's the best. That's how they give it up. That's the Great Joy way. Like, I don't know, Iron Islanders, that's how they do it. So, yes, Theon and Rob uh, deserve each other. 
They are both equally fucking idiots proving something to somebody who could give a shit less and missing the bigger picture. So, uh, Arya's conversation with the faceless man out there free. Everybody's dip. Arya talks to him like, ah, and he entices her with, yo, roll with me. Learn the faceless way. You want to kill these five people? I got you. All right. I like your spunk. We could use a, a, we could use a person like you. We could use a woman like you. Change your faces. Kill the people you want to kill. Let's go. And she's like, no, I really should try to make it to my parents. Let them know. Make it to my mom. Let her know I'm alive. Make it to Rob. You know, so she's got her own agenda. But he gave her a coin that said, hey, anytime you need me, you know, the, the Val- Valera's my locker rock. I know I fucked that up, but whatever. And she's like, and then she sees the power of the face of man. He was like, no, that dude's dead. Time for a new face. Boom. So anytime you see a man from Bravo and you need me, hand him this coin, say the words. So she saw the real power that was there. And we got to finally see it. We didn't understand why he was the faceless man. We didn't understand how he was able to do what he did. Now that we see that there's other things at play. And it's funny to me because none of the magical shit started. Like there was White Walkers, right? That was the first bit of magic we seen. I don't know if that's magic though. It should be, but I don't know. But when the dragons came and that comet flew, all of a sudden faceless men is is roaming around. Um, you got the House of Undying doing some very magical shit. So the birth of dragons unleashes something into the universe. It's like something going, and I think that's super dope. I like how it's all coming together. Like now, like the red, the red witch, she came out of nowhere. And it's not a coincidence that she's the Lord of the Light when the dragons pop out. Now that's, she's giving birth to dark babies. There's dark assassins and it's a lot of shit going on uh, since these dragons have been here. And I like how it's all, it's, it's just all a piece. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, Where else we got? Yeah, Stannis, speaking of the Red, the red Witch. Stannis is salty. This bitch turned her face. I love the facial expression of her. He was like, you promised me victory. She was like, ah. He, he's not seeing us. She was like, yeah. Didn't quite turn out what I thought it was. Ooh. He's angry. How do I spin this? But no, Lord. Yes. It's just you lost the battle. You didn't lose a war. He's like, you saw it in the fire. He's like, yeah, I did see it in the fire. Awkward. <laughs> But then she had him stare into a blazing fire, and he's like, oh, I'm seeing things. So she bought herself some more time. Like, I gotta be honest with you. It ain't looking good for Stannis. So Stannis looks like he's out for the kingdom. And now he's starting to regret killing his brother. Like, I did all this shit for no reason, and I killed my own brother. God, that was fucking stupid. God. All for not. Just for thousands of my men to be burned alive. By wildfire, I you know you know somebody had to correct me. It wasn't dragon fire. It was wildfire. You got it, all right. And to some, and to wrap this up, we got Jon Snow out there. But he sacrificed himself for Jon. He knew his life was over. He knew his life was forfeit, and he knew that they were going to torture the shit out of him. They was going to fillet his ass. It was not going to be a quick death, a easy death, right? It wasn't going to go down like that. So he was like, fuck it. If I could save one, he was peeping at, oh, girl likes Jon Snow, wants to keep him alive. She's trying to coach him on what to say to stay alive. And he took it upon himself to say, you know what? Fuck it. If I sacrifice myself, let Jon kill me, he'll be able to do something. I don't know. He sees something in Jon and he just feels the energy like he could be the one to make something happen. My life is forfeit anyway. And a quick death will be perfect. And I'll die by a brother by the wall. So my man executed his plan to a T. When he kills him, he's freed of his shackles. And we get to see what the Wildland Army look like. And they are deep. Right? We They are deep. And then on the other side, we see Sam and a couple of boys that are still digging shit trenches. And like, yo, and and I, they, he was right. I like his disposition about the snow. He's like, nobody should live in a place where you need to burn your own shit to stay warm. And I couldn't agree with him more. 
No, I can't. I love my city of Chicago, but I need to find a winter home. Because winter is coming here for Chicago. Oh, yeah. It's fucking coming. Like, most people want a summer home. Like, when the summer comes, they want to dip someplace and uh, enjoy. No. When summer comes, I don't want to be no place else other than Chicago. Summertime shy just is different. It's the one place on earth I want to be in the summertime. But in the winter? Yeah, I need a winter home. I need to disappear from fucking December to damn near April. Because March is filled with some bullshit. I need a home that I can run away to from December to April. So maybe y'all can share these videos. Okay, get these likes up. Help your boy out. Add to the subscriptions. Help cash rail out. You know what? That's what we're going to do. We're going to grow this thing so real can have a winter home. I think y'all know that I deserve it. <laughs> give give Rail some place tropical to go for four months out the year so he could give you content without freezing his ass off in Chicago. <laughs> That's the goal, people. But yeah, so John's looking like he's about to explore the wildling situation. Sam is out there and they hear the horn. They're like, oh shit, what's going on? Did they catch him? And then the second horn, they all brought out their knives like, oh, those are wildlings. They brought out their swords. Like, all right, where the fuck they at? They was ready for battle. Each, they acted out each horn blow. One is like, oh, we found somebody. Two, oh shit, wildlings, sword. Three, mm, mm. three is White Walker, right? Everybody's face changed. They said, fuck this, sprinted. Sam did the classic horror movie fall where you run not even three feet. And you fumble and fall on your fucking face. And now you're just waiting for Jason to fucking machete you. Like, come on, Sam. You're better than that. I've seen you move better than that. But he just, he hides behind a rock and we see the uh, White Walkers. Oh, they're basically zombies. They're just zombies. Some with blue eyes. Then we seen Buddy on the horse. Take a look at Sam. <laughs> Sam just sitting there cowering and crying. I was like, oh, poor Sammy. He just looked at him and was like, Ugh, we got bigger things to fry and you would not be useful in my, the, <laughs> in my army. That motherfucker sized Sam up like, you're not a threat. You're not even worth turning into one of us. What can I do with a fat ass bumbling White Walker? Like, no. I'd rather have this face, these dripping face bone damn near skeleton people then have your big bumbly crying ass like so i'm just gonna keep moving so i didn't like that honestly i felt like he really underestimated the value of sam he just dipped yeah that wasn't that wasn't cool sam could have been good he could have been a good white walker all right don't do that to my boy but the way they ended it with that every now we all like oh shit tywin comes and ends one war and a whole new one is on the path so the uh, shit is bussing north of the wall. Now that's all any of us want now. Khaleesi's free from Karth. Shit's bussing on the other side of the wall. Brienne's murdering motherfuckers trying to get Jamie out there. Jamie's like, oh shit. She got squabbles. All right, I was, I was fucking with her, but no, she know what she's doing. And she don't like to disrespect the women. She gave, hey, two quick deaths and one... So salute to Brianna Tarth. I fucks with her. Um, but that's it, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this. And I will see y'all. I, I know, man. I know y'all don't like waiting a week, but uh, your boy is it's the holiday season, man. You know, babies need gifts. The lady needs gifts. I bought a big ass tree though. Maybe too big. You know. Yeah, but protect your health and self for wealth, man. Your boy Rose out of here. Peace. Yo, I know I don't need no introduction, but y'all know who it is, man. It's your boy Hollywood Real. And I appreciate you for sliding through and watching these videos. But you know what I need from you? All right, if you ain't already, I need you to like this and subscribe this, man. We at a thousand trying to get to two, all right? Push it for your boy. Get them algorithms up. So when it comes to that subscribe button.